So this session is about uh, the Get It DevOps Analytics, which is this new plugin, this new feature that is aimed uh, at uh, allowing you to analyze the data that comes from your CI CD pipeline and get meaningful business information, KPI, out of that. Uh, my name is Cesare Sammartino. I deal with sales and marketing with uh, Get It Forge. I work with Luca. Uh, a few words about ourselves, even though I suspect that most of you do know us. Uh, we are a company that, whose only mission is supporting Get It Code Review in the large enterprise contest. Uh, we've been around uh, 10 years. As a matter of fact, this was our birthday yesterday night. Uh, we, our headquarters is based in London, and of course we are committed to open source, mostly Get It Code Review, but also all of the stack that typically you would find with that kind of technology. Now, uh, what is this thing that we want to talk to you about? I'll be short. This is just a brief introduction, and then I'll leave the technical side to Luca. Uh, Get it DevOps Analytics. It's a business intelligence solution. It's an analytics solution. So it came to us by working with many of our large customers that there's a whole wealth of information that is hidden within the logs that is not taken advantage of. There is, uh, there is a lot of value in, the, in those logs. There is a lot of value in, in that information that we're not exploiting. So the idea was to take advantage of that and try and build uh, an analytic solution, a business intelligence solution that would tell you many fun things about uh, how your people interact, uh, who are developers most active, what are the teams that function well, what are the teams that do not function well, where there is not an, a, a good balance uh, of work between the various members of the teams. Uh, uh, how are the projects progressing? Is there any bottleneck in your pipeline? All this information can be, can be found and exploited, uh, again, in the, in the audit logs that you find. And we're talking not only get it called review, even though, as you may understand, this has been from the beginning our first uh, objective, uh, but this is generally uh, applicable to all of the CI, CD uh, pipelines. So thinking about stuff like Jenkins, uh, GitHub, uh, and uh, anything really, as long as it produces in a text log, which is basically everything. In essence, um, so where can you apply this? To everything, but we we'll, we'll focus on these three dimensions, these three pillars, uh, people, projects, and system. So we're trying to find out meaningful information about the people working, about the projects that the people work in, about how the infrastructure is responding to your needs, whether there's any uh, bottleneck or whether there's any anomaly in the traffic data, that kind of information that can help you get the most out of, the, your, um, out of your development efforts and can also help you reduce the risk uh, of the delivery because there are issues, there are problems uh, that you can warn about by analyzing those data before deploying, which is eventually is the, main, uh, is the main focus of this exercise, allowing you to deploy stuff with the minimum risk because you would know very well the ecosystem that your stuff gets developed on. Enough on the introduction, on to Luca. Okay, so I was mentioning to Christina this morning that it's great for us to present here at Cloudera because this is really the perfect place to talk to you about big data. And uh, uh, the thing that uh, uh, was really impressive for me when I asked yesterday how many people has got 10,000 reviews, 100,000 reviews, million reviews, that gives you and put in your mind how much data those reviews are generating. And these data sometimes is not looked at, right? And uh, whenever someone does reviews, there are comments. Comments include messages. Messages are related to emotions. And good emotions are good, but there are bad emotions as well. So you want to get this data and analyze and crunch this data on a regular basis. So, of course, it's not something you can do with easy scripting because as you guys have got large installations, so uh, 
a script will take maybe days or months or years to go and get all of this. So you need more big data technologies. So those are the tools that we use to deliver the solution. So in terms of the message paths, uh, Nats and Kafka in terms of the repository for uh, putting the metrics, Prometheus, for storing, let's say, the pre-processed data and the data like HDFS, of course, and then a Flume for getting the data, let's say, into the different rivers that you need to go into the data lake, Spark and Kibana for processing and publishing. So, of course, we cannot go into all the details of that, but if you're interested, then talk to Cesare. He's the guy that will follow up with you. Okay, so what are the main components of this solution? So what we call Garrett DevOps Analytics. First of all, it's called Garrett, not because it's the first name of the solution, because it's mainly focused on Garrett. And that's, that's why we present on um, this uh, uh, specific summit. However, as Cesare mentioned, even if it's based on Garrett, there are many other tools that are able to produce data that is similar to the one that comes in Garrett. So I know that uh, you guys in your large companies have got as well other version control systems and other code review systems. How many of you, you are using GitHub as well in their companies? How many of you are using GitLab as well? How many of you are using Bitbucket as well? Okay, so that means that if you just get data from Garrett, you're not seeing the full picture. But if you're getting the data from GitHub, you don't see the full picture. So the answer is you need to have different collectors, different plugins in all the system you've got. They are able to go and capture that information and bring it back to a common place. And that's the first part, the GDI event collector. Those are a series of plugins. We're gonna to show today the one for Garrett, but there is as well one for Jenkins, there is one for GitHub, there is one for uh, GitLab and so on. And if you guys have another one that we don't know of, it's very simple, it's everything open source, you guys can develop your plugin to go and put data into this system. Or we can help you doing that. The second part is the crunching engine, yeah? It's called ELT and not ETL. How many of you knows what is ELT or ETL? Raise your hands. I'll spend just one word. So those three letters means three things. The first one is extraction. The second is loading. And the third one is transform. So historically, people were doing extraction, transform, and loading. Here, the new uh, way of uh, putting data into the data lake is more uh, extraction, loading to the data lake in a kind of semi-structured way. And then there is the crunching part that is gonna show the data in a variety of different ways. And then last but not least, the visualization, because of course you want to have raw data, but a lot of clients, they are saying, listen, but we don't have any visualization tool. Can you give us something that will be able to go and give us some pretty shiny and good looking dashboards. Of course, if you guys already use Tableau or you are using Splunk or any commercial product, it means that you can use the first part, the analytics plugin, the second part, the analytics ETL, and then use your own tool for doing the dashboards. But if you want to have all the solution all at once in a super simple way, there will be Tony and Punch, those two guys that have been working in the hackathon to uh, deliver the, uh, what we call the Analytics Switzer plugin that will show you how you can simply get the three of them in a very simple way. <clears throat> okay, so uh, one thing, uh, we are gonna show a real life uh, situation because I like what Linus Torvalds was saying. Talk is cheap, show me the code. I want to show you the code, yeah? I will use uh, two examples of two open source projects. The first one is, no surprise, Garrett Code Review. So I started already years ago of uh, providing the analytics for the Garrett Code Review project ecosystem to the Garrett community because I'm truly believer of dog fooding. If you don't apply the software to yourself, you never know what makes sense or not, right? And um, uh, the second will be a project from Intel that is open source, so no surprise, so is open. And um, uh, is uh, one of the most active open source projects on Garrett Code Review on Gary Hub. Okay, I mentioned yesterday that uh, <clears throat> The Gary Code Review project is mirrored on GitHub. 
And this is done through the Gary Hub uh, uh, multi master multi thread system that you have seen before. So basically, we, we have a current app that takes every, I believe, 15 minutes, whatever it is on the Gary Code Review project, and is pushed into Gary Hub. Once it is on Gary Hub, of course, as you have seen yesterday, it's going to be injected to the two sites, and one of the two sites is dedicated for the analytics. Yeah, that side is dedicated to the analytics, is pushing all the data back to GitHub so that people on GitHub can have, let's say, their kudos for the work they do on Garrett. So, um, so if you go here, you will see that everything that is uh, being done by the people is updated in real time. So if you see on uh, semi-real time, I will say, yeah, for, system, for instance, you see that the last commit was done by Martin. Martin, you're not having breakfast. And just committing on Gary. And um, it was done just 13 minutes ago, but that commit actually happened on Gary on GitHub. So you know that GitHub provides already some data and insights, right? So if you go to GitHub, how many of you are using the data insights in GitHub? There we go. You go there and you can see how many contributors are contributing to Gary. You say, oh, good, it's 242. Have you ever wondered, first of all, it's not super fast, but that's fine, took a while. And have you ever wondered if that number is correct? Have you ever, have you ever checked if the number on GitHub Analytics is correct or not? Exactly, so, that's, uh, so the comment from uh, David Ostrowski is, GitHub actually gives you analytics just in the things and the users that he knows about, right? Okay, sounds good. So, but then there is a second problem, right? I'm a little bit surprised that Edwin is just in that position. Why just number four? Exactly, so the comment from David Ostrowski is, yeah, but GitHub actually is not really showing the things that he knows about, but the things that he knows about, about the users, it's just a specific point in time but not what happened maybe when Enwin was part of a different company, right? And then because uh, Edwin is not here with us because he's on holiday and he's based in Germany, and uh, the people that knows Edwin is one of the historical members of the team. He started contributing uh, before 2011, but GitHub shows just from uh, 2015 when he joined Google. Okay, then there is a second problem. You see that this one says contributions to master excluding merge commits. Okay, but you know, when we release software, what is the most important things that we want to know? Exactly, the branch. So we, yeah, we can release a master all the time, but most of the time we release on stable branches, yeah, because we want to cut a stable branch for our release and we want to make sure that that one is stable. So what is the risk associated to my release? It means how many commits are in this release? How many people are involved in this release? How many security problems there are in my release? So there will be an interesting talk this afternoon that will talk about the security because the security is a very big risk. Security is a bug that you guys, if you go live with a security problem, you guys have a big problem, right? The software may work, but you will be subject to attacks, or maybe you will have weaknesses that you need to fix. Even the last fix in uh, Garrett on 215, 215, sorry, 214, no, 17, right? I did it right? Was all about security fixes. Yes, yeah? so security is a big uh, aspect. It needs to be put into consideration. And with the information that you see here, is not enough. And good, there is community. Ah, yes, I want to see exactly how the community works. Can I understand if the community is healthy? Can I understand if the community is cooperating? No, that doesn't give me any information. The last point that I wanted to touch as well is that Garrett is not a single repo. Do you have experiences or projects? Do you know about projects that got more than one repo associated? Yeah, many. For instance, how many repos are in the Android operating system projects? Do you know the exact number? Anyone knows? I don't know, but I don't know. Dave, Dave, do you know the exact number? How many? How many? Around a thousand repos. Okay, so let's assume that the analytics that we see here are good. So, and let's assume that I do it for 
the Android projects. And we'll need to go and uh, click, click, click on each one of those, get in the metrics, and try to understand how the release works. So imagine I want to see the contribution. I need to go there for every single person. I need to click there, see the number, get in there. So it's going to be quite tricky. And as you know, if you want to extract metrics, needs to be something needs to be systematic and needs to happen constantly. Because if you don't do constantly, it means that it will take a lot of time, you will tend not to be accurate, and you won't do it, and you won't trust it anymore. So one thing that is important, to allow you guys to make decisions, you need real data. You need a real extraction, you need automation, and you need that, that to be in a form that you can understand. So we send as a company, as Gary Forge, because we saw that the people were struggling with these problems, we say we need to do something about that. Okay, so what we did was basically, first of all, trying to extract the information and put into a form that was, let's say, easy to display in this form in this way, but even uh, usable for you to reuse in different forms. So I talked over breakfast to some of you guys, and uh, I believe that you guys already started working in this direction. And the first one was uh, just using open source tools. So we didn't want to build a kind of... A, uh, made up GUI in um, the Gary project just for making yet another thing that is non standard. So we started using standard tools such as Elasticsearch and Kibana. And this is exactly the same view that you see on GitHub here. You see that the graphs are similar, yeah? But we in one big difference. First of all, we consider all the repositories that are part of the Gary platform. There are 172. So if you think about it, Gary, it's just one repo. It's not. It's many repos. Because first of all, they are the core plugins. They, they're called core because they really are part of the core. They were used to be part of the core. And we decoupled those plugins. But they are still part of the release. So as well yesterday, when we were thinking about the migration, talking about the migration to 2.15, some of the people, they were saying, yes, migration works, but that plugin broke. And how many times on the mailing list we are talking about People, they are migrating, but the plugins are not working anymore. So plugins needs to be put into the picture, and that is a different repo. Then let's try to exercise, again, the experiment of Edwin. So if we go there, and because this is standard, this is Kibana, I can go and add other filters. So let's try to look for Edwin. So I go here, and I say that I want to say author is Edwin. Edwin. Okay. The spelling is correct, right? Okay, so you see a very different picture, right? So the first picture you see that he started contributing back in 2009, 2010. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because this is exactly when he started to contribute. Then he was very, very active until 2012, and then he went to Google. I believe this, is, this, was, this was it, yeah, when he went to Google, that spike. So possibly, I don't know, maybe it started to work a lot more. Maybe Google, what do you guys do, do to guys? They're working so much. That's good. But then there is another thing that is important. So if I want to see then Edwin contributions across all the repos, I can go down and instead of going through, can you see the screen? Should I increase the fonts? Is it okay? Okay. I can see as well what was the percentage of contribution on Edwin on all different projects. So I say, for instance, then actually he worked a lot to the imported plugin. That is a plugin that is very important because it allows people to migrate data between different gate servers. Then he worked a lot on the Xdocs. That is a fantastic plugin that allows you to do code review on documents, usually, on service user, on Imagara, on review it. That was the Android application. All that view is great, yeah, because how many times people are asking you, oh my gosh, what about if that guy quits? What is the impact on the project? And sometimes you say, uh, yeah, I don't know. No, no, we can manage. And then if you ask the data, the data will tell you exactly what's the impact if Edwin is leaving the company. And another thing that is really great, because is a, is a process for you that goes across different data sources, I can see as well that Edwin was working for two companies. Because if I go to the split of the organization view, then I can see that 
looking at the entire Gary project in the past 10 years, so the default view on analytics, sorry, if you want to play yourself is analytics.garyhub.io, and that is updated uh, constantly to the Gary Code Review project. You can see that Edwin actually was working in SAP and in Google because you see the same person with two companies. So I don't have any more the problem that we saw before. So that's great. I wanted to give you a different view as well. So a more pragmatic view from the release management perspective because um, 216 has been released by the community, but the release manager was me. So official is Gary Forge helping with 216. We are really glad to help the community for that. And uh, as a release manager, typically what the release manager was doing was running some scripting to try to extract some metrics about the uh, repository. But then I said, why don't we just stop doing it in a kind of uh, manual or semi-automated way? So extracting that information should be something that should be automated. So if you go here, this view has as well one important feature that is master, right? Sorry, that is the branch. So I can go and change the graph going to different branches. So I can see this picture from different points of view. So if I go here and I edit, instead of saying branch, let's say stable, 216, there we go. And of course, because everything belongs to stable 216, because it's starting from uh, uh, the beginning of the ages, I need to say that I want to go to now, but here I am changing to the, uh, sorry, I need to do absolute, set to now, and I'm changing when the release started, that it was the uh, March, should be in the 24th. So this was when the development for the release started and then this is was until now on the stable 216. And then I see that's the picture, oh, sorry, that was the Edwin contribution. I need to remove Edwin from the picture, there we go. That's the entire project contribution. This is the contribution of the entire 216. So you can see that basically when they started the 216, there was a hackathon, that's a hackathon right in the middle. So it was basically cut just before the hackathon. And then you can clearly see when I started cutting the 216 because the contribution, they don't go mainly anymore to 216. You see that it was a stabilization phase at the end. And then if you want to see, okay, but what was the major changes that happened on the 216? You can see that other than Gerrit, the delete project plugin has been changed quite a lot. And then the LFS and the Buzzlet, the Go Import, Upload Validator, you can see all the different impacts on different plugins. Uh, yesterday, discussing the migration, there was a lot of discussion again about uh, what is the impact of that migration, right? What's the expectation in the mind of the people they're using a new release? These can give you a lot of useful information. And uh, one dimension that is really interesting is the people dimension. So I'm gonna show you now the people impact in terms of the code they write, and then we are gonna see as well the relationship part, that is how they cooperated together to build the release. So in this case, I can see the contribution, different people, specifically to 216. So David, you're here, there we go. So David contributed quite a lot. Han Wen, Casper, Dave, Edwin, and David Persaus. Those are the top ones. And then you see all the other people, their impacts. So if you were telling me what would, would have been the impact on the release if Edwin and David would have gone to Cuba for a nice holiday, that would have been catastrophic. Guys, don't go on holiday. And then um, from a company perspective, you can see as well what was the contribution from different companies. You can see the top uh, five contributors to 216. They were at Google, Collabnet, Gary Forge, Ericsson, and Wikimedia Foundation, right? Wikimedia because there is one guy that is called Paladox that is very young but super productive. He did a lot, a lot of stuff for 216, okay? Okay, so let's go to a second type of visualization. So this is telling me about uh, what were the main people impacted, the main teams impacted, in this case, the companies that contributed to the release. But how do we know if the code that has been actually written has been deeply and thoroughly reviewed or not? This doesn't give me this picture. So I'm gonna go to a different visualization. And again, using a different open source tool that is called Gary Stunts. 
So uh, this one is uh, crunching the same information, but in a different point of view. So instead of just giving me the absolute values or the reviews in terms of the final results, gives me the graph or relationship that created a, a specific piece of code. So what does it mean? It means that if I see that there was one person that did a lot of code, but almost no reviews, that person is, yes, very productive, but as well, very dangerous, right? Because what happens if he's, I don't know, wins a lottery? What happens if he's, I don't know, he's breaking his leg and he's going to the hospital? What happens if he quits his place, yeah? And find another job. Here in the Silicon Valley, it's very easy to go from one place to the other. If you've got one guy that wrote 50% or 90% of the code of a release, and nobody reviewed that code, so nobody knows that code, and that guy, after one week, goes from one company A to company B, then your project is good. So this is an aspect that you want to analyze. And you don't want to analyze manually, you want to have tools that help you analyzing this data. So this type of example is on the Intel SPDK project, and uh, it's open source, and it's hosted by Gary Habayo, and uh, you see all the people that are involved in this project. Those are the names that you see here. Then, unfortunately, the projection doesn't show you the colors very well, but uh, these heat map has different colors. They go from green to uh, bright red, and the greenish it is, the better, and the red is not good. So you can see many aspects. So first of all, the, uh, on the rows, you see the contributors. On the columns, you see different aspects of the review. You see how many plus two, minus two, plus one, minus one they were given, how many comments were written, right? Because you can have a code review plus one merged. That is not a good review, unless it was just I did the link to the presentation of the summit is fine, but otherwise was not good at all. So basically it tells you that in this case, for instance, the guy that did uh, most of the code was, uh, let me check, there we go, this is very active, you see it's very greenish here, it's given a lot of plus two, 978, he did 243 commits for this specific version, he did a lot of comments. Then there is another thing that is really another um, metric that is really interesting is uh, for how long the review lasted. So you know that if you want really to have an effective um, code review process, code reviews needs to be small and short-lived. If you have reviews that last for months or years with, uh, I don't know, hundreds of uh, patch sets, you've got two problems. First of all, you're slow in delivering software, but most importantly, your Gary server will die because if you have, I don't know, 10,000 changes, and each change has uh, 1,000 of uh, patch sets, how many reps you've got? 10,000 changes, each change, each change has 1,000 patch set. You've got 10 million reps. And the Git repo, the Git protocol before v2 is not super optimized for these scenarios, right? So this is something you want to have a look and understand what's going on. Because then, as a Garrett administrator, you can go to that guy and say, what's going on? Why your reviews are taking so many pets set? It's taking so long. And another thing is the relationship between people. So the second visualization gives you the team graph that is for a specific open source project, has a graphical visualization of who is contributing the most, but most importantly, how that person is related to the others. So in this case, no surprise, this guy is exactly Daniel. It should be that guy, let me, show, let me check what's in a tool, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's not shown very well on the projector, but when I go there, it says Daniel Verkamp. And as you can see, it's not just someone that writes a lot of code, but you see that there are connections to other people. And it has a very green ball because it means that it is considered a positive a contribution to the team. And you see as well the other people that are closely related to the same person, right? It would be nice and we want to display this one in real time on Gary Code Review as well. And the thing that is interesting is as well, let's say, what is the other dots? So the other people, so the ones that have got a red dot without connections, represents people that contribute a lot, but rarely have interaction with the other people. So those are the danger of your project, because if that guy, in that case, let me check as well the name. Yeah, that, that guy, Genku, is winning a lottery, then all the code he wrote, nobody has a clue of what he does, okay? 
So last but not least, so this is information that will give you uh, insights about what happened in the past. But many times you guys want to know exactly what is what's happening right now. So this is a point of view of the people and the projects. But Cesar was talking about the system as well. So you want to see as well what happens in flight. You want to see as well why today Garrett is not performing well. So why all of a sudden all my, let's say, code reviews are taking longer and all my clones are starting having a higher latency. So in this project, we are investing as well on Prometheus, right? So we uh, start in providing fixes to Java Melody to support, to Java Melody plugin to support Prometheus scenario. So it means that if you're using Java Melody, do you guys use Java Melody? Who has now raised their hand? What do you do? So how do you extract the metrics of your Garrett system? Can you, can you answer the ones that didn't raise their hands? Yeah, what do you do? What do you use? Splunk. Okay. How do you get the metrics out of the JVM? You don't. Okay. So uh, Java Melody is a plugin that Java Melody is an open source tool, and David Ostrowski wrote a plugin for uh, Garrett. And uh, the good thing is that it is extracting useful metrics for us. And inspired by us, then in Garrett itself was introduced later a metric system. But one thing that was missing was the ability to publish to Prometheus, and we fixed that. So this is, for instance, this is a real life um, uh, Grafana visualization of the metrics from Java Melody. And this is Gary Habayo exactly right now. So as you can see, there are all the different metrics that you get from uh, the JVM itself, so use memory, CPU load, the GC times, uh, someone, yeah, here at the moment here, someone is start hitting, Gary Habayo see some GC that is going up, active threads, so this is very important as well because a healthy Gary system should be always quite low, this is good, we got a little bit of uh, latency this morning, but it was good, and what is more important is that here we are working in publishing everything else that is happening on Garrett. There is already the Prometheus publisher plugin, in a Prometheus reported plugin in Garrett that provides a lot of useful data. Unfortunately, there are some bugs in 215, but we are very committed to fix them and uh, provide back to the community. And, um, and we are going to put a lot more information here. So basically, all the information you will see on the other Kibana uh, graphs, the ones that make sense to be computed in real time, they will show up on this side as well. In this way, for instance, with Grafana, you can even define alerts. And with those alerts, you can start triggering as well page duty on people that is going to act proactively on your Gary setup to understand exactly what's not working and to fix before it creates an outage or a big disaster. Okay? So now, because that's the question is how can you guys get started with something like that quickly? There will be Tony and Punch. They will come and show you a project that I've been working during the hackathon. It is called Analytics Switzer. They will allow you guys, when you go home and start on Monday, to get this one with three clicks. Three or four? Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. So uh, my name is Tony. I work with uh, Luca, Cesare, and uh, Punch for uh, uh, Garrett Forge. Uh, so lately, we've been working on uh, basically allowing you guys to um, uh, to try out uh, the analytics plugin, so the the um, so if you want to have like an, an analytics dashboard uh, and try it out on uh, some of your repos, uh, so the analytics plugin uh, allows you to yeah it basically exposes a REST API and you can just quit it and get stats uh, out of your repositories. Uh, and then we've been working on the analytics quizzard, which basically leverages the analytics plugin and. Uh, uh, it does a little bit of magic that I, I will tell you about, and the result hopefully will be a, uh, a dashboard where you can actually uh, get some in useful insights on, on your repositories. Uh, so when you install the Analytics Wizard, you will uh, have a, a new menu uh, item here. Um, <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, yeah, so it will basically take you to a dashboard. Uh, yeah, it's not the prettiest uh, dashboard, uh, but um, hopefully should do the job. This is a live demo, so bear with me if things go south. <laughs> um, 
So you just ins insert a dashboard name. This can just be an arbitrary number. And then you have a couple of fields uh, that you can, you can set. So you can decide to um, just import the analytics across all the repositories that you have imported in uh, Garrett. Uh, or you can just specify a, um, a subset of that. Um, so uh, uh, for this demo, I just import the Garrett repositories. Then you have uh, some aggregation type. So this is about reducing the amount of data that you extract uh, from uh, your repositories because, uh, I mean, this is running uh, locally on, uh, on your machine. Uh, so you, um, it might be overwhelming the amount of data uh, that you need to process. So it might be good to do some uh, pre-aggregation of the data. Here you can decide the granularity of that uh, aggregation. So I'm going to use uh, author per hour. And then here you just decide a, uh, the time window that you want to analyze. So for the sake of this demo, I, I will not go too much back in time. Um, yeah, and then it will just process data until today. Username and password is just to, uh, you, you might need to, uh, to, to have basic authentication when talking to Garrett. But. So, uh, okay, so let's create this dashboard. So as uh, the dashboard gets uh, created, I will tell you what's happening behind the scenes. Um, so now there are, uh, the way it works is basically we, uh, we create a Docker Compose file and then uh, uh, the Docker Compose will just pull images uh, from uh, the um, uh, Garrett Forge re uh, repositories and there are different components that allow this to, to, to work. So we have obviously Elasticsearch and, and Kibana images. Uh, they are uh, been, been uh, previously configured to allow this and then we have um, like a dashboard importer that just um, does some uh, specific configuration for this. And then the most important uh, part of the mix is this um, uh, analytics ETL. So the X is a Spark job that we just uh, run um, uh, against your Garrett instance. And by hitting the analytics endpoint, it will extract data. It will parallelize the processing. It will do some aggregation and some filtering. And then it will uh, just insert this data in uh, uh, Elasticsearch. And then through Kibana, uh, you will just be able to uh, uh, just to, to have a dashboard that is very, very similar to the analytics uh, one that um, we have in um, uh, Garrett Forge. Uh, obviously, all of this is quite a lot of work. Uh, so it might actually take a while for your dashboard to uh, to, to complete, uh, but yeah, don't despair. Usually, it just uh, it, it gets to the end uh, to the end of it. Uh, just wanted to mention one thing. So first of all, at the moment, so um, Tony is running on his laptop, but of course, you will not run on your, your laptop. So you will run on the Gary server. Second, it's a very bad idea to run on your production Gary server because. I believe it's busy, right? So you may first, before going to this solution, set up something like uh, the installation that I showed you yesterday. So whenever you've got a disaster recovery site, that's the perfect place when you want to do data crunching. And last but not least, this is just a uh, one-off. So it means one, you've got the, one you've, once you've done the extraction from the beginning of the age to a specific date, that every day you just run the delta. So it means the very first one maybe will take a few minutes, but a subsequent will take seconds, okay? Yeah, that, that, that's right. Uh, yeah, and maybe one day we will have a, a real-time solution that you, you just keep ingesting data as, uh, as it gets generated. So yeah, there you go. This is the dashboard. Uh, I'm not going to show you the details because Luke has been very thorough with it. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys want to give it a try, even later today or you know, in the next few days, you can just, so today you can grab me and Punch and we, we are Happy to help you set it up. It's pretty easy, and you can start getting an insight on your data right away. So yeah, thank you. OK, thank you, Tony. Yeah, applause to Tony. Hi. Um, this is just a quick question. I've seen you started working on that during the last uh, user summit, and uh, hackathon, actually. Um, the question is, is there any chance to select by hashtag? Because that was missing last time during the hackathon. Uh, yeah, I believe that's a great idea. Why don't you contribute to it? <laughs> so okay. that one, one thing, everything that we have shown now is on the Gary Code Review. GaryReview.googlesource.com is open to everyone. It really is exactly the same license as Garrett, and those guys have signed the CLA, so it's exactly as Garrett. So yes, it's a great idea. Yes, it's absolutely on the pipeline. 
Come and join okay. us. Help yeah. us out. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. No, that's really great. For instance, if we wanted to go and do the same extractions on the hackathon, that we have a hashtag, that would be great to say, oh, I just want to do that hashtag. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Yeah. Does that setup wizard only work on 2.16, or can we use it on 2.15 or earlier versions? So uh, it depends. So, that, so the, the only part that is dependent from the version of Garrett is the plugin, so the events collector, so the first part, because that is the one that is dependent from the tool. And that's the one that you can even port to other tools. They are not even Garrett. So the analytics plugin is uh, uh, compatible with 2.14, 2.15, and 2.16, and master. If you got 2.13, sorry guys, we don't, we don't do 2.13 for this stuff. But I believe that uh, if you have an earlier release, definitely can be developed. So it can be developed, but it's not there yet for 2.13. But from 2.14 onwards, absolutely yes, it's there. Yep. Yeah, we, we don't do a ton of analytics for uh, at GM, but can you explain a little bit the difference between the analytics plugin and the Java Melody plugin? I think you were using, you were kind of talking about both, but I don't yep. quite understand the difference. That's the plugin you download it from here. Once you download the plugin, the plugin itself allows you basically to have a specific slash monitoring URL, and then you see the Java Melody screens. So if you've never seen Java Melody screens, so let me show you, for instance, the one. Uh, so for instance, if you go to Gary Hub monitoring, you will see something like this, right? So the problem with Java Melody as it was out of the box is that if I have a one node works, so it all works, because if Gary doesn't work, how can I see what's the situation of Gary? It doesn't work. <laughs> so it was good to see when it's good, but the metrics that allows you to understand what happens when it's bad, right? And if I just render the page when it's working fine, that is not helpful. And the second thing is that if you've got four nodes, five nodes, six nodes, seven nodes, then you've got problems, right? Because you want to get everything to the same picture. So basically what we started doing is to do some extensions on um, the plugin for supporting uh, the Prometheus exporting. So if you do format, format, right, Prometheus. Instead of giving you a graph visualization, gives you a Prometheus format of the same metrics. And how Prometheus works is that it's able to query this specific plugin at, on that specific endpoint on a regular basis. And uh, because Prometheus then is a single point, it's going to get all the metrics from all different servers for all different tags. And this format is compatible. So thanks to David for providing the German Melody plugin, and thanks to you for the other guys in Gary Forge for fixing it for Prometheus. Okay? Thank, okay. thank you for adding the export. Okay, <laughs> yeah, absolutely.